I took a lot of medications, a lot of this nonsense garbage that doctors had me on since I was seven years old. So I went through the Seldanes and the Claritin and the Allegra and the Allegra D and the Zyrtec and I take, took all of those as a child. By the time I was 18 years old, I was using a CPAP unit at night, which is basically an oxygen mask. So they put on an oxygen mask over your, when, when you're sleeping. At 18 years old, I'm sitting there like I'm in the ER just to try to get a little bit of breath because I was so clogged up, had so much mucus in my system, pus in my system, that I couldn't even breathe at night. Wouldn't get enough oxygen, so I had to use oxygen. And of course, you know, growing up, I was you know, big into the weightlifting, so I did the... Uh, I uh, used to bench press 300 pounds and used to play football. Uh, was a, a star. I went to uh, the Princeton High School up north a little bit with yeah, offensive linemen. You know, did the whole thing and you know, I tried to make it look like everything was cool on the exterior, but I was going through sickness all the time. And at one point, I would have to go to school with a tissue with a box of tissues and I would go through that entire box of tissues by the end of the school day. Now most people stay home when they're that sick, but because I was that sick all the time, I had to, you know, show up and go and plus I always kind of had to drive to do well in school so I didn't want to miss all the time, so I did what I had to do. Not to mention the, the, other, <laughs> the other thing that I think about that, you know, I used to have a lot of problems uh, having bowel movements because it was, it was like stones coming out because of the type of food I was eating. And so that's not, you know, that, that's, that's not a real fun way to be. The problem is there's too many of us that live like that and think it's normality. We think it's normal to be constipated, to be all stopped up, to, to get sick every, even if it's just once a year, that's still too much. Because we ain't supposed to get sick in that manner. However, if we do, it is our responsibility not to go try to grab the Sudafed and to grab all of the little things like that that they want to give us to try to suppress the symptoms but to let nature take its course and let the elimination flow. What are you supposed to do? First and foremost, you get sick, stop eating pus and mucus forming foods. I'll say it again, if you get sick, Stop eating pus and mucus forming foods. 
Now, can somebody please tell me what are pus and mucus forming foods? This. <laughs> so I heard dairy. Yeah, I heard fast food. What else? Rice. Huh? White rice. That's it. A lot of people don't realize, and I know people love the rice, but it, it makes glue. They make bookbinders glue out of rice. If you cook it long enough, it turns into this sticky glue. The object of the mucus, one of the objects of the mucus diet healing system is not to eat foods that when you heat it up in your body at 98 degrees, where it's gonna turn into glue. It's gonna turn into sludge. So we name dairy, we name rice, you know, grains. So essentially, pus forming foods are gonna be dairy, and dead animal flesh, you know, so meat and dairy, that's pus forming. And the reason we say pus forming is because it's decayed, rotting flesh. Uh, anything that is blood born is going to decay into pus. And that's the worst stuff that we can eat. That's just viscous. It's like, you know, it's really, uh, it's really rough stuff. Uh, dairy is pus, meat is pus. Mucus forming foods are going to be things like your grains and your, your starches, uh, your fats, even your fatty fruits and vegetables. A lot of folks love the avocados. Cool for the transition, but they are, uh, they are mucus forming. Uh, a lot of people don't like to hear that. So when we have too much mucus in our system, what, what happens? So what I'm going to do, sometimes I like to pass this around. So I'm a, yeah, yeah, you can show the, show the kids here. So here, I, I got a picture of something. I, I know it's probably hard for y'all to see. If y'all want to come up here a little closer, you can come on up. In fact, I'll just, I'll just kind of put all the lay, lay this out. That's your bow. I saw that yeah. before. So yeah, you, yeah, this is, now, now we're about to get real. If, no, if you haven't ever seen you. this, oh, God. <laughs> I killed you! I killed you! Yes, sir. What is this? Uh, all right, so so I'm, I'm just doing a little little display here. So what we got going on now? This is the slime that is in most of our intestines. If you're not practicing the mucus diet, if you're not doing colon irrigation, doing enemas, we like to do lemon juice enemas with distilled water and lemons. If you're not doing that, it's a good chance that this is up in there. This is what Western doctors and Western nutritionists Satan's kingdom say is natural. This is na this is healthy right here. This is to have this old putrid, nasty black slime. This is black slime. Society for most. Yes, slime. You know, this is what's considered to be normal within. United States, Spirit. all around the world. Dr. Spirit, I mean, Professor Spirit, can you put it up on the board? Oh, okay, so yeah. So we can um, videotape some of this. Now, the, the people that think they're so, that they're the healthiest folks in the world, you start, they ain't got that out. You know, you, they start doing enemas, they start eating a little cleaner, eating the mucus-free foods. Oh and boom and this stuff starts coming out and we're talking about folks that's in you know teenagers i work with folks as teenagers that ate that that you know, didn't even eat as bad as i ate that ate relatively what they thought was well and that stuff is still coming out so until we can get intimate with this and really start to take this seriously we're going to continue to have chronic illness that we're not supposed to have that's very much you know, I don't like the word cure because, I mean, there, there really is no such thing as disease in the sense that they, like, they used to use that term, you know, they, where they like to, because they like to just label things. It's all the same thing, whether, no matter what you call it. You can call it diabetes, you can call it gangrene, you can call it a uh, heart attack, you can call it stroke, whatever you want to call it, the foundation of it is constipation, not just constipation in your bowels, but cellular constipation. On the cellular level, when you eat pus and mucus forming foods, 
you are basically just filling your body up from head to toe with this viscous slime, this glue. And we wonder why we don't feel good. We wonder why we want to go out there and, you know, get, get in fights, get, get in shootouts. We wonder why the police are so constipated and so crazy and want to come and beat up everybody that they see. My thing is take pus and mucus forming foods out of the equation. Take pus and mucus forming foods out of their diet. Right. Go up the street to the police department, get you a police department of folks that do not consume pus and mucus forming foods, and let's see the percentage of unarmed black males and black women that get shot. Let's see the percentage of black women that end up hung in their jail cell. Pus, and we have to understand this, pus and mucus is, uh, my brother right here said, the devil. <laughs> it is the evil of the world. It is the foundation of insanity, of this insane, where insanity defining normality. And we got to start taking our health into our own, own hands and understanding how our bodies operate because uh, as we like to say, the highest level revolutionaries are those that can learn how to put, uh, those who can learn how to control what they put into their bodies. So, you know, we can march and we can, you know, we gotta, you know, stand up, all that, but if we don't come together around this, with this power, see, we don't understand, like this is the greatest weapon that we could ever have against those that want to keep us oppressed. Yes, like we say you can't live like your oppressor and then complain about it. And as long as we're still trying to go on down to that McDonald's and the Burger King and you know I think one time I saw uh, uh, well, the, 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 the suicide bombers, I saw this in a documentary, the suicide bombers with 9-11, before they went to get in a plane to go fly into a, a building, they stopped at Pizza Hut. You know, so I don't eat at Pizza Hut, so I don't relate to them. Uh, what was, I, I don't remember his name, whatever, the, 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 little, the little racist white boy that, that just shot the, shot the folks in the church not too long ago, Dylan or something. Why, why did the police take him to get a slice of pizza? Burger King. Burger, thank you. What a, you know, pus. Take him to Burger King. Here's a dude that just shot nine, nine folks in a church, nine black folks in a church, and they have the, uh, the, the decency. We're going to take him and get, it, get him a nice burger. That is pus and mucus thinking. That's thinking based on a diet of pus and mucus. And so when we look down here, and, uh, and I know some of y'all saw the feet, the, I'll explain the feet thing here, basically what was happening. This person would have lost their feet. This is what happens right before they chop your legs off, you know, if you have diabetes and you start to get the gangrene. Mm -hmm. Basically it's a lack of circulation. Your, your blood is not circulating and pus is starting to build up. Your lymphatic system is not moving the waste out. And so what, what this depicts basically is the chronic level, and this, this person really didn't even change their diet. They basically just started doing colon irrigation. They just started doing enemas. And by day seven, uh, by, you know, as, as, as time progressed by day seven, it started to uh, shrink up where it started to get better and better and better, their condition. Yeah, and um, and so uh, so basically in terms of like what is the mucus diet healing system, basically it is a transitionary system. So I'm not telling anybody to just go home tonight and eat nothing but fruits for the rest of your life, for you know, fruits and green leafy vegetables or whatever. We have to commit to making a change and we can do so gradually so that the change is comfortable for us. Each person's body is different. Personally, it took me six months to totally get off of me. 
Most of the people I work with, they're, they're either already off of me or it takes them a lot, they're, they're a lot faster. But the key is I applied the principles of the system so that I could get to a point where it was easy. I didn't crave the meat. You know, you want to get to the point where the foods that kill us are about as uh, delectable to us as Clorox bleach. Because when you go to the store and you're in the kitchen aisle and you see bleach, your mouth doesn't start to water. Like, mm. like you don't have to resist bleach. It's like, it's like, man, that bleach looks good. You know, but that's what meat turns into when you're clean. You got to get the poisons out. Right now, the poisons are in us, and that's why we crave the poison. You know, but you start to flush that out. You start getting rid of that and you no longer crave that stuff. And that's the key, that's what makes this easier and that's what the system, you know, the healing system. And our approach is to do this thing gradually where you don't have to do nothing real, you know, hardcore like that. So the different elements of the diet are basically you have your mucus-free foods, which are fruits and green leafy vegetables. Then you have, we call it mucus lean, but basically foods that are mucus forming, but they're not that bad. They're not as bad as if you were to go eat a piece of chicken or something. And these are the things that can really help you get off of the worst foods. And so uh, I used a lot of like 100% wheat spaghetti to get off of meat. You know, these days, it wasn't around then, but you got the quinoa, you could do that kind of thing. You know, just any, the, the, the grains, that kind of stuff is mucus forming, but you can use it to get off of the worst days. And uh, so that's, that's the diet part. So basically, mo most people practice mucus diet. We usually eat twice a day, so we don't eat like three or four times a day. We'll eat in the afternoon, have uh, you know, either a fruit meal or vegetable meal or something like that, and then we'll eat once in the evening. If you do need to have some early on, you probably should eat some fruit because that whole nonsense, oh, you could almost look out in the, in the uh, uh, the whole mainstream consciousness and whatever they say pretty much just flip it backwards because it's probably going to be the exact opposite so when they say well you gotta have a hearty breakfast you gotta you know get your scrambled eggs and your bacon and all that kind of that's like the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do because those foods if you think about something like an egg egg is actually like egg is actually pure pus like it's nothing but pus that's the, by definition that's what it is albumin uh, which which means you know uh, the, the Latin of that means white you know so by definition eggs are, are pus itself and that's what they that's what we're supposed to eat in the morning <laughs> we're supposed to fry up pus and, and, and like that's normal you know so that's what we, we got to get away from <laughs> the, uh, yeah. And that is, that is the slavery that perpetuates itself from 450 years ago to today. The they got us where it counts, which is what we're putting in our body. So as long as they got that, you know, we still out here, you know, just, you know, we might, might as well be in, in the fields or something because they got us. But once we take control of our health and we start to clean ourselves up, we start to get ourselves together, they, they won't even be ready for that. See, and, and, and the other part of the diet is fasting. And there's a book that Arnold Eric wrote called Rational Fasting, and it's one of the best manuals on uh, a logical approach to fasting. And so we don't try to say, hey, you go and do a long fast. You know, I could talk about Brother Air who introduced me to the diet. He's done really long fast. I've done some extended fasting, but that's not really important. You know, what's important is the, the if it's your first one day fast, your first two or three day fast, you're getting into the juices, your first day that you eat nothing but fruit all day. And what you will see is levels of cleansing start to take place. And if you couple that up with, and, and this, this is a important one here. Who, who knows what this is? Yes, this is an enema bag. And so you, 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 you yes, yes, enema bag. So you're going to want to take this and you're going to want to take some of these, these are lemons. 
and, uh, and, and a little bit of this. So some, uh, some distilled water, and you heat it up a little bit, and uh, put it in the bag, you know, lay down, and, uh, uh, and, and as, as it says in uh, something I read, you know, let, let the angel, uh, uh, that the angel of water cleanse you. <laughs> and that, when you start to put these different mechanics together, that's when it gets real powerful. So, you know, you can start to eat better, but then you start doing some colon irrigation and you start to see that, man, I'm, I'm actually cleaning myself out. I'm starting to get some of this gunk and the slime is coming out. It's getting easier for me. I'm not craving the bad stuff. In fact, now I'm starting to crave the good stuff. I mean, that blew me away when I started actually craving fruit and craving vegetables. I never had that. And uh, it's with those of you that had never seen the, the worst picture of me is probably this picture here that's that was the one on on the left hand side that was there's not a whole lot of pictures of me when I was 280 but that I was real close to moving in that obese direction where I was going to lose control you know I was getting double chin action and um, <laughs> and uh, and I was I was feeling terrible but the thing was you I, I was numbing myself with drugs, you know, I was smoking a lot, I was drinking a lot, and in you know and, and, and eating a lot. And so you just sort of get in this space where you, you really can't think. And you can't act out of this habit. You get into this habit and whatever you're used to doing, you just kind of keep doing it. And um, you know, so I was real uncomfortable, but I didn't know anything. You know, I, I didn't know anything better. I had tried other diets in the past and nothing had ever worked. Nothing made sense because there was no system. People would say, well, you're supposed to eat this. And uh, then, then the Atkins was real big when I got in. And I was, and even, even that sounded crazy to me back then. You know, I was just like, Atkins diet, yeah, meat, 100% uh, meat diet, that, that doesn't make any kind of sense. And, um, you know, but, but that's what we're dealing with. You know, our approach is to simplify. We want to really simplify this thing. And I know some brothers and sisters in front of me maybe had, you know, kind of got into some of the nutrition theories and that kind of stuff. But we're kind of, uh, you know, we're kind of radical when it comes to some of that in terms of just how do we think about our body and how do we think about diet. Uh, you know, protein is a theory. <laughs> You know, protein as it relates to, well, you got to get your protein. Well, well, who said? I mean, that's a theory, but they don't teach it to us like that. Because I'm not telling you to not believe in it. I'm just saying, look at its history. When I started reading the history of the protein theory and the vitamin theory and all of these things, I was like, first of all, it hasn't been around that long. You know, 1800s, I think the word protein was maybe coined in 1830 by a chemist named Mulder. And, these, and they were doing experiments, it was Mulder, uh, another cat named Francois Magenti, and they were doing all kinds of experiments on dogs and where they, was, uh, they were basically starving dogs. You know, and you can look up some of that stuff and there's more to it. But at the end of the day, they, they got to this reasoning that, that pro, meaning first, teen, meaning principle, that the first principle to life is, you know, sl slime. This is pus, basically, you know, and, and even though they, they sort of was like, well, maybe that, maybe we, sh you know, maybe protein isn't the best word. They used it anyway. And so now they get you into this thing where instead of talking about elimination, we're always talking about, oh, I got to get this. I got to get enough nutrients. I got to, I got to get this protein or, you know, now I got to get my B12. I got to get this. I got to get that. Our mantra should be, I got to eliminate this. I got to eliminate that. You know, what can I eat that will loosen? What can I eat that will help to drain some of this waste on out of me? That's, that should be our mantra. That should be the way we talk. You look on the side of a, a, a you know, like a, where they have the nutritional, so-called nutritional facts. All, most of that is, is totally unnecessary. All they need is, I want to see a mucus quotient. I want to see, like, what percentage of this in here is, is will turn to slime when I eat it, and, uh, you know, that would be a more rational, you know, if you were going to have nutritional facts on something, 
you know that that would make make a little bit more sense. Because most of that stuff on there is, is totally useless. Uh, because and we you, and you don't necessarily come to that realization until you start to fast, until you start to eat fruit, and you notice, well, wait a minute, my body actually likes this. You know, it likes it, fe it feels this. This feels pretty good. And then you start to question some of these things that we've been brought up believing. Where they just say, oh, you're just supposed to do this and you're supposed to eat that and that kind of stuff. And it's like, well, what if I don't? Now what? You know, what are you going to do? Nothing. I'm going to heal and you're going to stand over there just constipated and mad, you know. And so, uh, so, so this, is, this, this is where we're at. You know, we really got to... Uh, you know, we really got to work to get ourselves together and you know, this should be the first priority You know health should be the first priority in our lives You know and for those a lot of us has practiced the mucus diet for extended periods of time. We have Made the diet the central part in our life, you know, where we made sure that everything uh, You know kind of revolves around the diet, you know, and I tend to work with two different types of people I work with People that have chronic illness that really don't have any other avenue, they've been to the doctors and all that, and the doctors say, well, you need this chemo, you need this, you need that. And then they start to think to themselves, well, there's like a, whatever, 95% people do chemo die or whatever the percentage is. And uh, so then they start to think to themselves, well, maybe there's another way. Then they start checking out natural healing. You know, and then maybe they come across the mucus diet healing system or something related to it, because there's some other naturopathic modalities uh, out there, and uh, all of which, when something works, normally the foundation of it in some way is fasting. Oftentimes, people will attribute healing to to the herbs or to some of these other, to the fruit, to the other things. Those are for cleansing. Those can aid you in the cleansing process if you put it the right way but the fasting process is what is really happening your body heals itself when you get out of its way and you let it do what it's supposed to do you know and so that's what I like to say mucus diet healing system is an art form you know there's a lot of people say well it's scientific it's like I mean we could break down the science of it and we could sit down and do chemical equations and, and all that kind of stuff but my thing is most people relate to the artistic process is just that concept. You know, if you've ever played an instrument as a musician, or you tried to draw something or write uh, or anything like that, you know that there's principles involved, mechanics, like there's sort of a right way in theory to do something, to hold the instrument, that kind of stuff that makes it easier. But at a certain point, you have to <laughs> use the principles you got and then you're on your own. You kind of say, okay, well, let me apply this and see where I can take it. Right. The mucus diet is very much like that. Uh -huh. You take the principles and you say, okay, what, how, how, how can I make this work within the context of my life? Because we also talk about, it's not just enough to know the diet, but also to understand Socially, this is a this. I'm not gonna lie. This is challenging because you have to make some really tough decisions about what you're gonna do with your life. And uh, and the and I say maybe the number one reason a lot of people don't are unsuccessful with practicing the mucus diet is due to social pressures. They, right? Yeah. They, that social dynamic starts to pull on people. You know, because when you're showing up. To the, to the barbecue and you got a couple mangoes, you know, in your bag and everybody else is sitting around, you know, just, you know, eating all the, all the pork and, the, you know, and all the other stuff, you're going to stick out, you know, like a sore thumb and people are going to be like, what you doing, what you think, you cute, what you eating, that? you know, and so there's, there's going to be some tension and eventually you get cleaner and you really don't necessarily want to be in that environment at all. And, uh, and so it, it's very challenging, but what I would like to see, there's a lot of community builders right here, is for people to come together and to support each other doing this. So we can actually start to build communities around this higher level, you know, plant-based thinking and healing and understand that, that we got to do this. You know, this is, this is the new Underground Railroad. Like I said before, uh, you know, it, it's kind of like, 
Because some people like to, they like to wait. They think that they have a lot of time to make these decisions. And so they're like, well, you know, I'm, you know, maybe I'll get it. Maybe I'll read the book. Maybe I won't. You know, they're just kind of like the days ago. The way I try to put it is, when Harriet Tubman came by, when she came over to the plantation, you pretty much had to make a decision right now. Are you going to go and, 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 and put it all on the line? You might not make it. Or are you going to just sit here and say, oh, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to just keep on working these fields and, you know, I'm, I'm, I only get beat a couple times a week. I'm good, you know, it just because I don't know where you're going. You know, we had to look at it like that. This is that important and this is that crucial. We don't have time to waste. We don't have time to like, think about it. I was kind of like we have to make that decision right now to get cleaner to get ourselves together and our families because uh, and I'm you know I work with mothers that have children that are into the diet that have healed uh, a lot of illnesses that the children have and the the children are able to get into this actually fairly easy it's like the parents have to get in they have to kind of get into it and get on on that right page but the kids they uh, this always frustrates me when I go to the store and, I, and this happens all the time. I go to the store, I'll be in the produce aisle, and there'll be little children, and they'll, and they'll be in the produce, like pointing at the apples and the mangoes and the, and the lemons, and they get so excited in the produce aisle. And it wasn't just once, it was many times I saw the mother kind of grab the child, like, nope, and they would walk over to the candy aisle and get candy. They're like the kid was, the kid was trying to help you out. It's like here, this is apples right here. You know, we, let's do this. But like, no, we get you the candy. And then the other side is, we want to invest in good quality fruit and vegetables because it does taste better. So a lot of people have never experienced what it ta what it tastes like to have you know a really good you know ripe mango or ripe pineapple or some really good grapes. You know, uh, because a lot of people say, well, okay, well, let's get some fruit. And they get that $2, two dollar bag of apples that tastes like water, you know. Don't, that don't taste good to me or anybody else, you know. And, and, and that's why kids grow up thinking that fruits and vegetables don't taste good. Because they're not given the opportunity to really get some good tasting fruit. Uh, I dare you, go get, get a juicer, make it, get some good fruit, and juice it and give that juice to the kids and I guarantee they're going to they're not they're going to be like Kool-Aid what? They want that juice. Because when they do drink the Kool-Aid, what they really crave is the fruit juice. That's why we like sweet stuff. We are basically biologically fruit eaters. So it would make sense that we crave the sweet stuff, you know, we crave the fruit. And uh, so, I don't know how, how much how much time do I, do I got, we just kind of... So I'll say a few more things and I, I want to open it up for, uh, huh? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I keep keep going a little bit and um, I'm going to grab a copy of my book. Can you grab a copy of my book for me, please? And I do uh, want to recognize uh, Sister Takora back there. And uh, to Sister Decora, how long have you practiced the mucus diet? Two years. How long? Two years. Ten years. She's practiced the mucus diet for almost Time six three, years. Two, oh. Seven years. Yeah, that was. Now she's practiced. She she has practiced the diet uh, since the eighties. Yeah, since the eighties. Yeah, things. Not huh? Okay, 99. I thought it was... No, nah, it was older than that. Yeah. I, I, I started in 95, so I thought uh, it was before maybe 89. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so she, yeah, she, she being, being sheep and shit. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, and then we got um, Khalid Mawusi and, and their tribe. And uh, you said when you got in the diet, what, 90? Yeah, 95. Jerry Higgins. He didn't. Even, he wasn't even really into it no more. But he introduced me to it, luckily. Yeah. And you know, I, mean, I started doing intimates and stuff by like 95, 96. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and then uh, we got 
He's Hanif born over here, baby Baba G. And he was yeah. born into the mucus's diet. And so he's uh, just had his, his Earth Day. <laughs> and uh, tell, tell him how old you are. Um, 21. Yeah, he just turned yeah. 21. Yeah. So he's practiced the mucus's diet for 21 years. And, uh, you know, came up in this thing. And so, you know, Cincinnati was really the hub. You know, Brother Vic, the cat, you know, that really had things going right here, you know, Cincinnati. And, uh, and, and it was, you know, kind of a thriving community. And, you know, things happen and, you know, stuff kind of takes different shape. But, you know, we got to got to keep it going, you know, got to keep that vibe because that vibration is still here. And that's the thing, people don't realize that Cincinnati is the vanguard for diet and health because the mucus of diet healing system practitioners live here, you know. And so when people want to know about, well, what's the highest level of diet? Because you know, I talk. I work with a lot of people, you know, that, that are into the kind of raw foods and fruit and, and fruitarianism and these other concepts. And what I say is, all of those things are within the context of the mucus's diet healing system. Because the highest levels of the mucus's diet would be raw fruits or raw fruits and vegetables, along with fasting. Um, but there's also things that you could eat as you're transitioning that you might not know about unless you read the book. There's things that you could eat uh, uh, that can help you get off of worse things, like the cottage cheese type of vibe. There's the, uh, uh, you know, even if you do venture over into some of the processed vegan foods, you know, I'm not going to get mad at you. You know, like I said, this is about a transition. If you start doing some animals and you start kind of lining up your diet a little bit better so that things eliminate well, those things will find their way out. You know, where you just won't want them anymore and you'll start to really enjoy what it is that you're supposed to eat. You know, what your body really is craving. And, uh, and, and so, so this is the book now, the original Mucus Diet Healing System uh, developed and talked about Professor Arnold Eric. He, had actually, he was actually uh, uh, diagnosed with something called Bright's disease, you know, it's inflammation. And he was, uh, and he was basically, all, he went to all the doctors, this is the late 1800s, he went to all these doctors and they all basically told him, we don't have none for you. You know, they gave him a death sentence. So he started looking into some other options, like, well, is there anything in this natural world that I can use? So he looked into this vegetarianism, and there was these communes that were coming up, this fruit eating and all this kind of stuff. But he never really found the thing that really healed him. So one day he was like, okay, I'm just going to fast. I'm just, I'm just going to stop eating. And he actually thought he was maybe going to just try to kill himself by not eating. And that's what he thought would happen. What ended up happening was he actually got better. He started healing, and within two weeks he was he was up and about and felt better than ever. And he had the genius intellect to understand and kind of see what had just happened. He had just fasted his way to health, and the fruits and the vegetables, which don't create slime in the body, helped in that process to make it palatable, to make it to, you know to aid the body in that loosening up and eliminating process. And so uh, by, he, he started writing articles in Europe and you know, it kind of created this real uh, controversy. He actually did a, a, a series of fasts. At one point he held a world record for how long he could fast. So he was fasting like 49 days and it was all documented by government officials so it was real. And, uh, and, and so he was creating this big vibe he ended up coming over to America, and that's when he kind of put together uh, this. The first version of the Mucus's Diet came out in about 1920, 21, 22. Uh, a couple, couple versions, and uh, you know, then it, then it kept coming out. Now this version is an annotated version. Basically, what I do is I all these questions that people, most people have when they read the book, I just comment. You know, I kind of give clarity to a lot of issues that 21st century readers would have, you know, with, with the book. And so, so this, this is available if you, you want to get it today, I'll, I'll sign it, you know, it's, uh, 
Uh, I'm doing it $10 here today. Uh, on Amazon, it's $15. So if you want it uh, today, you might want to grab it. But uh, I do want to, I got about eight minutes left, so I do want to open it up for questions. Anybody have any, any questions for me? Yeah, Arnold Eric did. Yeah, yeah, he did 49 days. It was a water fast. Yeah, so he did 49 days. Uh, uh, yeah, on on nothing but water. So, with our combination of our spiritual healing with the meditation. Well, that that's a that's actually a big part of it. I mean, we the the science of breath. Arnold Eric says that the human body is an air gas engine. So we're not even trying to say that food gives us fuel to live. The f you take a breath in, you're getting fuel right now. You know, and so the science of breath and understanding how deep that can go, you know, that's something that we definitely talk more about. There's, you know, I like to call them ancillary therapies because there's a lot of things that we can do around the diet, whether it be meditation, the, the yoga, the acupressure, the puncture, and the animals, and the massage, and the out of body traveling, and the, you know, what oh, you all you know, this whole you know. realm. Oh. And what the mucus diet allows us to do is to clear ourselves up so that we can actually get a, the highest benefit from these practices. So whatever you're doing, if, if it's yoga, if you, you know, for me, I'm a musician, so my meditative, uh, life sort of revolves around my music because that kind of gets me into that space and I'm able to, to to go on those journeys and that science of breath practice and everything within the context of music uh, you know and I always like to see everybody play music because that's we're, we're, we're musical beings uh, but but uh, yeah, so yeah, science of breath is, you know, it's not talked about as much in here. I talk about, yeah, I, in one of the notes, I, I think I, I mentioned a little bit. Uh, I have another book called uh, Spirit Speaks, uh, that's, uh, and I, I get into a, a little, little bit of that. But yeah, the spiritual, the one thing is, we've, we tend to talk most about the diet because what the diet does is it allows you to open up so that the, your, your spiritual experience becomes very singular. It's like, it's what you experience. And so we, we tend to stay away from sort of dogmatic concepts and things where it say, well, you're supposed to, you know, if you do this, you do that, or, you know, pray like this, or breathe like that. It's kind of like, just practice a diet, and then what happens is you start to clear up your mind. You know, you clear up your thinking, and you can start to have some clear thought, and you and, and things start to blossom you know in ways it's really hard to even to describe uh, you know you just start to just start to blossom and to me that is that's like the real spirituality you know because spira means what air breath breath very good you know so that's <laughs> fundamental you know in, in, inspiration spirit it all revolves around the breath you know so that's 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 the foundation mm. Is that corn? Yeah, uh, yeah cor corn is mucus forming, but it is, is, is better than other things. It's, it's better to eat it than it is to go and eat some other stuff. Uh, one of the ways that we sort of judge food in the mucus diet healing system is how well it eliminates. So you can kind of see for yourself when you eat something and it moves through your intestines well and you're able to to, you know, it keeps things moving and it's like, okay, well that, that might be good for my transition. If you notice that it's kind of grimy and, and, and soggy and, you know, kind of gets in, in and just doesn't really move real well, then that will let you know that that might not be the greatest thing to use. And so, you know, I found all, uh, pretty early corn was something that didn't necessarily really eliminate well. Uh, you know, the corn chip kind of vibe, that, that's a little better. Uh, to, to us in terms of just eliminating, but uh, but yeah, but yeah, corn is, is mucus forming. Can I ask you a question yes. about feeding muscles? People, like I work in a factory, I don't need to be any wider and get buff. Mm. So I love a slender frame, but I, when I work very hard, 
I have this tendency to get famished. And you know, everybody will go for a break go and, and a snack in the break room. Some people bring their own and help them. Do you, um, are you able to go with longer without food? Could you sit through a break after perhaps a famished for a long time, using a lot of energy equipment to being on a factory line or something? Yeah, without yeah. Without eating, not necessarily drinking water. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, there, there's a couple parts to that because on one hand, Depending on what you have to go through, depending on your uh, your past illnesses, and we call constitutional encumbrance, some people call it genetic encumbrances or whatever, uh, genetic weaknesses, sometimes you're going to have to get a little weak. You're going to have to, you know, and that's when we say, when you prioritize the diet and you understand that when you do fast and you do have to lay down in the bed and kind of let the body heal itself and drain, you don't want to be doing a bunch of activity and that kind of stuff, so you wouldn't want to be at work in that case. But once you start to get over those humps, you start to see levels of energy that you didn't even know was there, you know, that you're just like, man, I, I can do this. You know, especially when it's something that you do like to do. It Sometimes it's a little harder to do stuff you don't want to do. <laughs> Uh, but if it's something that you that you you know you're kind of passionate about and you're able to like yeah you know uh, you know yeah yeah you can you can definitely do that and uh, so all right uh, brothers and sisters uh, okay I'll do one more quick question then I gotta wrap it up yeah nuts are mucus forming but we recommend combining nuts with raisins or some kind of dried fruit so if you uh, Combine nuts with raisins, it helps it to eliminate. And that was something I used uh, a lot in the early days to, to help a little. Germination. I mean, we, we tend to not get as much into the germination side, but, uh, you know, but, but that's, that's a possibility, uh, definitely, you know. Then with me, it, it wasn't that long where it was several years and then I really didn't want nuts that much at all. And so uh, stuff like that, I might eat a couple times a year now, but I did eat nuts and raisins a lot when I was transitioning. What if you don't like raisins? Uh, I like figs. Nuts, I don't like, no, I don't like figs. Figs, uh, I mean, it's... it's, it's, it's huh? They will leave the nuts off. Yeah, yeah, because it's... It, yeah, and then the thing, and the other thing, you want to keep an open mind, because your palate will change. You know, the way that you taste, you, you'll start to... You craved, I mean, I went through a period where I was craving stuff that I'd never eat, eaten before. I was craving like breadfruit and stuff like I'd never eaten that. It was like stuff from Africa. I was like, what's going on? You know, so you physiologically, you actually start going back in time, essentially. And uh, so you'll actually, you know, and so you might at some point start liking that and craving uh, uh, the figs and that kind of stuff, and you would be like, "Wow, I didn't never like these before, but I kind of like them now," you know. So, so this definitely is a process of you know keeping an open mind and, uh, and that kind of thing. So, so I want to thank all of you for a great uh, discussion. It was a privilege and a pleasure to come on down to Cincinnati, uh, my hometown, and, and talk to you beautiful people. We want to know when can you come back and we'll do a little class just with those up close and personal so we can sit down and look yeah. at your DV, I mean your, uh, the stuff that uh, you want to stuff. put on yeah, the screen. Yeah. And, yeah, this was for the community, but we want it for the community. Right, I feel you. Yeah, well, we I will be talking to uh, the folks here okay. at the uh, Sisters from Birth and we will set something up and I'll you know, come down and we'll have a little workshop. That's what you, you want to work toward that. Yeah, so it's still a transition. So there, you, you're allowed to eat other things on, on the on the trail, on the path. But uh, then, then, but when it's time to heal and when it's time to feel better and get yourself, yeah, the fruits and vegetables. And yeah, if we do a workshop, I can kind of you know teach you a little bit about you know food combinations and <laughs> organizing menus and that kind of stuff. Very much so, like I said, if you want this, let me know. Ten bucks tonight, uh, fifteen bucks on Amazon, and uh, so yeah, it's my time. Peace, love, and breath. <laughs>